Hello, and good morning. So, uh, just a couple days ago, version 91 uh, just finally came out for uh, One Vision, and just wanted to go over some of the new stuff that was added. So I apologize for being a couple days late on this, uh, there really wasn't any other way that, uh, that it could end up going, so uh, without any further ado, let's go over and go over the notes here. So, uh, for the f for the equipment stuff here, the side grades basically got changed to be the same as the regular stuff, as far as levels are concerned. Um, like he says here, it's just easier to actually see how they're going there, easier to compare the two. Uh, some bonuses to racial skills got changed, because this is the one that changed uh, the racial system entirely, as in, anatomy is no longer a thing for the vast majority of the units. So agility bonuses on all gear got higher, just to make uh, one-handers and two-handers a bit more... It, it just help them to compete a little bit more uh, with the other stuff that's there. Uh, like it says here, uh, agility isn't something you can stack on most things, so you know it's more worthwhile to go with swords for that reason. They're the accurate one. Uh, vitality bonuses are lower, just so you can actually get past some of the tankier units now. Uh, Crusagrim got its recipe changed a little bit, so now it's a void instead of storm. Uh, just because it's supposed to be like an evil sword thing, or something like that. Uh, damage bonuses got shifted around, so now there's kind of that whole three-way dynamic between hammers, swords, and axes. Uh, basically, swords, like it says here, are the uh, the one that does the most damage. It's the accurate one. However, it has the hardest time getting past armor. Uh, hammers end up doing, uh, doing the best against armor, and axes are somewhere in the middle there. So, basically, if you can get through the armor with a sword, it's going to do a bit more. That's that's the deal there. Uh, spears got slightly lower bonus damage. Um, I'm pretty sure that's something Mr. Cramhole is going to gonna realize a fair bit in his run. Uh, he was getting a whole heck of a ton of extra damage off of two-hander spears. Uh, those things have been really amazing, so it's, it's about time they got a little bit of a nerf. Uh, RT of using heavy melee weapons is a little bit higher. Again, you know, slow them down just a little bit. They were kind of the obvious choice. Uh, reinforced uh, one-hander katanas have uh, a slightly higher attack, just so it's, you know, a bit better for uh, dual wielding, as it says. Uh, whips now give a plus two bonus to subdue and tame. So that makes sense, since they're mostly a beastmaster kind of thing. Uh, spellbooks got changed to dex weapons, and they're now a thing that does two to three range, and can hit around obstacles, so they're basically a telekinetic weapon now. Which is friggin' awesome, because it worked out perfectly for... Uh, <laughs> For team I was putting together here. Actually, if I can just show this real quick. Let's see here. Pop this up. Pop this up. Where are ya? Yeah, I was putting together a, a few of the teams for the AI arena, and this just worked out perfectly uh, for this particular character. But yeah, you get a little bit of extra range on him now. Oh, telekinetic and stuff. It's pretty awesome. And they provide their usual bonus against a particular group. That's well, all well and fun. Actually, let's put this back up now. So, what else? Uh, because of re the reduction to vitality, damage resistance on all, all armor except gloves is significantly increased, which will most notably make heavier armor more effective relative to other types, but less likely to fully protect a unit from damage than before. So yeah, uh, basically if it gets past their armor, it, it's like a, it's another step towards a, a full implementation of an armor system. If it gets past their armor, it does more. If it doesn't, it doesn't do nearly as much. And they don't get any of their bonuses or anything, so that should be all well and good. Uh, elemental resistances on shields uh, was reduced to make them slightly less effective versus spells. Makes sense, uh, since you need to have specific shields for those. Uh, jewelry stats are more focused to make them more make the choice more relevant, with few exceptions. Stat rings will have just basic stats, starting rings will just have attack and defense, and earrings or chokers will just uh, have damage bonus and resistances. So less, you know, jack-of-all-trades kind of stuff, uh, with exception to the Firecrest, which is still just the best of everything, no questions asked. Well, I mean, you can arguably get more damage out of stuff without it, but, you know, at a 10 reduction to weight and basically a bonus to every single stat, it's kind of the best thing, which it pretty well should be, considering you can only get one and you have to literally go through hell to get it. Anyhow, uh, earrings now apply their bonus through base damage resists, so it will show up properly on the character screen. Actually, did not know that was something that was fixable. Awesome. So yeah, earrings will actually properly show their damage now. 
I'd, so consumables, then I won't be able to use Salvation Stones in Story Battle, so you won't instantly lose it by mistake. Uh, for those unaware, uh, Salvation Stones are the ones that sacrifice a particular unit in order to bring another one back. So if at any point uh, Denim had used one, he would just get vaporized, and that's the end of that. Um, so yeah, instant game over button is removed. Uh, Salvation Stones now restore the unit to 50% health. I think it was 25 before, so you, man, in many cases you sacrificed the unit, then immediately lost the second one. This should be a little bit better. Uh, grenades have different visuals and a 50% chance to apply the same statuses on hit as Dragon Breaths. Uh, they also do much more damage to obstacles like bushes, barricades, or clones. So much more of a uh, practical benefit there to actually use them to break past stuff. Uh, before they were just kind of an awkward AoE weapon, so they're definitely more handy to keep around now. Uh, then Grimoire Monty got replaced with Grimoire Torture. You know, the, just a, a couple renamings happened there. Let's see, next up, skill-wise, racial skills were removed from the game. Not really, but like he says, they weren't really removed, but uh, the way they function, it was a bit of an odd one. Uh, to summarize what he says in this big thing here, <laughs> uh, anatomy was the only one that was really worth using. Uh, all the other ones were way too situational and way too difficult to actually raise up to bother using them at any point. Not to mention you could really, I, I think you could only equip one of them at any given time, so it was a Again, really situational. Um, so, uh, basically the way it changed is any class, any unit that can't be a particular class is allowed to be, you know, quote-unquote racist against that class. So, like, for example, griffins and stuff get access to anatomy, but people don't. Uh, lizards, I believe... Do they get access to anatomy? I'm not sure. I don't know if lizards do. But either way, uh, scaling uh, got changed for the experience and all those, so... Uh, Anatomy is the slowest to raise up now. Uh, technology is a little bit higher. Uh, Terology, Herpology, Draconology, and Demonology is a little bit above them. And then the fastest are Sacrology, Aurology, and Golemony, which are two times faster than Anatomy. Uh, so equipping and still light and in still dark at once isn't possible anymore. Uh, really? Huh. I didn't know you could actually stack those before, but that would have been pretty insane. Uh, Berserker and Swordmaster got, uh, gained access to double attack a bit earlier, so that's just overall handy. Uh, wards are available earlier, it's now possible to equip all recruitment skills at once. Like he says here, <laughs> you can actually make yourself a mediator, which is friggin' awesome. So yeah, mediators are a thing now, anyone can be one. Uh, you just have to go through the right sets of classes to actually pick up all those skills, but yeah. Anyone can potentially be a mediator, and that actually makes the uh, the pacifist run I was considering a little bit more doable. Don't have to go through nearly as many hoops. All right, gonna have to try that later. Anyhow, moving on. Uh, classes most have less vitality, but the difference between high and low vit isn't as high as before. Minor adjustments to some of the classes, most notably monsters have received a dex buff for better ranged attacks, which would mostly just be dragons and octopi, I think. Because uh, I know Griffins can't throw rocks anymore. Uh, Spellblade and Valkyrie lost access to Rally and gained access to Faded Circle. Rogue and Ranger lost access to Disarm. Haven't seen anyone bothering with it, so, and I needed its spot. Very true. I mean, I was even doing a trap run. <laughs> well, it's fair to call it a trap run. It was like 90% of the damage was coming from traps, and even then I didn't really feel like bothering to use Disarm, so fair enough. Um, and yeah... Kind of weird to see Spellblade and Valkyrie lose access to uh, Rally, but I guess that'll go to other places. I guess it was kind of becoming their main thing as the backup unit. Uh, Necromancer lost access to Beckon and Recall. Uh, Varton uses the same amount of RT per tile as a regular fighter. He also gained access to Windshot, uh, which is a reference to older games. Uh, since it did seem kind of strange that he never got access to his Windshot ability. Uh, Astromancer lost access to Stardust Grace and gained Galaxy Stop, which is an FFT reference. Uh, Dragons lost access to Dragoneye and gained Disembowel, which is a friggin' awesome move, by the way. Okay, so now to explain what all of that actually meant. So, minor buffs and area of effects reduced by one, re buffing your entire team at the start became too easy, so it almost feels like a much, which... Ah, sorry. Almost feels like a must, which can turn into a chore over time, so... Good. More uh, more situational buffs, less huge area buffs. Uh, basic area damage spells do a bit more damage. Good uh, bursts do a bit more damage, but also deal crushing damage. They'll be easier to resist. 
Uh, this way they're more uh, more of a normal hit with elemental properties. They can bypass the light and dark restrictions. Um, and he likes saying that he loves being consistent, which is true. He makes everything consistent. It's awesome. Uh, Hoverdraft affects an area again. I think that used to affect an area, and then it was a weird thing where warlocks would go around making everyone fly. I might be mixing that up with something else. Anyway, it affects an area now. Uh, poison Mist area reduced by 1. It also does a low amount of water damage up front with 100% uh, uh, poison with an extended duration. And hopefully that stops the CPU from spamming it as liberally. And it does. I've actually seen them using different stuff now. Actually, I've been testing uh, one of the teams for the AI arena. Uh, specifically one of the uh, Dark Knight teams. And they've actually been going and properly cycling through all their abilities almost seemingly at random. So, uh, yeah, they, they've still been using Poison, but they've been using uh, Fixate, they've been using um, Paralytic Wave and that sort of thing. So, yeah, less uh, constant Poison all the time. Uh, poison Cloud and Deadly Poison got a similar treatment, except that the Poison and Venom whatever is a normal duration, requires a successful roll, as the Poison of it is super is of supernatural origin, and they're dark, uh, the deal damage, it means they won't work on dead now. Makes sense. Yeah, like he says, uh, <laughs> no more Poison Zombies, hopefully. Um, ascended, replaced with Agony, a dark spell that uh, inflicts the damage that the caster suffers onto the target at the cost of burning all the user's MP. It's a bit less ver broken version of Pain, probably more interesting than Nimble and, uh, or Nimble that the enemy likes to spam so much, which I believe was just the jump plus one move. Uh, RT cost increased to 40, mana, initial mana cost reduced to 20. So it's kind of like a last ditch, you know, hit you with everything kind of move. Uh, pretty useful for the classes that get it. Uh, Gift of Renewal heals a small amount of damage up front. Uh, this also applies to Aegis, by the way. Uh, it just makes you uh, get a little bit of an extra heal, so that was a nice buff to Knights. Uh, minor Draconic buff uh, cost increased to 20. That way minor buffs from Elemental Schools retain the, adan the uh, advantage of being used on the first turn. Um, like he says there, just basically means that uh, your basic stuff that you start all your casters on it still remains relevant. Um, before that, you know, Draconic stuff would just essentially be a better version. But that's changed. Uh, Martyrdom area of effect increased by one tile. Uh, frenzy costs increased a bit to match Boon of, Boon of uh, Swiftness. Uh, let's see, release, change to rebuild. A spell that removes all debuffs from an undead unit. So that should be handy for anyone that's got a zombie that's all like slowed, stunned, and petrified. Uh, let's see, basic damage of uh, ninjutsu stuff slightly increased, airmen got reworked, oh by the way this is a really cool one, uh, airmen got reworked to a necromancer specific crossbow move that doesn't miss and can inflict wither. So yeah, they can t potentially take 20% off something's health bar uh, for a very long time <laughs> with a guaranteed shot. That should be really awesome. Um, let's see, it doesn't miss, but it, it does say that it can inflict wither. Previously, 100% hit moves were unable to miss uh, with their secondary effects. I wonder if that's changed. Uh, added Windshot, a special skill that does crushing damage to all targets in a line. Uh, movement buffs on items last longer. So I guess that gives stuff like Flying Rings a bit more relevance. Uh, Hopango Winds uh, restores a small amount of HP up front. Gives a little bo bit more usefulness to uh, Canopus's class. Uh, empower skills don't advance RT counters any anymore. Uh, turned out to be a bit too good and made catnip obsolete. Yeah, very true. <laughs> that was, uh, yeah, that made that really, really, really fast. Um, also, it recently killed off a few units in my um, in my other run, I think. But oh well. Let's see, recruit skills will now show their actual effective range, uh, which will extend by rank. Their RT cost is also lower. Uh, so if you weren't aware of how that worked, previously it just showed range as the entire map, but their range was actually about, well, it was equal to uh, uh, equal to the rank that you had in that particular thing. Most people never got past 1, so it stayed as at an effective range of 1. Once you got it to 2, it was two, 2 tiles, although it dropped off, I think, like, by 15 or so percent for the second tile. Either way, point being, it never used all those tiles ever. Like, you can max it out and it would, you would never be recruiting somebody from across the map. That was a strange thing, but yeah, now it's showing it properly. And, uh, yeah, that's all well and good. Uh, added Faded Circle, a cheap skill that 
grants a single guaranteed melee hit to units in the area. Most skills that spell blades have were kind of situational, so having one they can use at any time would strengthen their support role. Guaranteed hit is more useful in the mod, considering there are more weapons with effect procs around. And yeah, like he says there, and like I was mentioning earlier, if you have a secondary effect on a weapon and you have 100% hit, uh, or at, or any skill that says it will grant 100% hit, that also applies to its secondary ability. So if you've got a bunch of guys with hammers, they are guaranteed to either stun or knock back uh, that particular unit. Alright, Salvation TP costs further reduced to 20, considering it's a skill that doesn't create MP from nothing, and it probably shouldn't e be even remotely costly, so that makes liches a little bit better. Uh, that's their ability that saps MP from all the units around, and in many cases was kind of like a way more situational version of Meditate. Like, it could potentially better be better, it could also be potentially worthless. It was usually really good if you had a couple knights around and they weren't using their MP anyway, so... You know, you had that. Uh, added Galaxy Stop, an expensive move that can inflict Bound, Shackle, or Stop on all enemies in the field. Uh, the chances rolled separately at 10% for each, with a stronger debuff replacing the weaker if more than one proc, same as Infernal Kiss. So that one is amazing, and uh, that should be Warren only, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that should be friggin' amazing, as far as having Warren around. Uh, Limelight has an additional effect, mostly for flavor, but it might be useful in certain parts of the game. Actually, that I want to take a quick peek at, because I meant to take a look at it before, and did not remember to do so. So let's do that right now. So we've got Yuria somewhere in here. Where are you? There you are. I do already have it. Let's see. Where is our T? Alright, let's let's take a quick peek at that. Fast forward through this real quick. You're gonna go ahead and smack this lady with a book. Wait, right, it's telekinetic now, so let's see what the new effect looks like. Or, counts as a melee, but it's, you know, nice. <laughs> oh! Oops. Um, oops. Unkill, please. <laughs> Maybe, uh, good enough. Alright, and you should probably go distract this griffin so he doesn't do that job. Oh, wait, I forgot to actually give him anything. Oh well, he can stay up here. He still does his distraction job. Now, let's take a look at what this does. Okay, it, it looks like it's got a little bit extra sparkle, and it looks like it causes units to look directly at her. I guess that is the difference there. Go ahead and retreat out of this, and move back to the page. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's weird that everybody leveled up from that. Um, what was I looking at here? Oh, wait. Get this back up. Okay, added Disembowel, a monster special skill that spends all TP to scale both accuracy and damage. So that's basically a full power move for dragons, and yeah, like, if they get close with that, it is, it is a very crushing thing. Like, it, it can be amazing. Uh, I will say that even though their accuracy scales up, they still don't have a weapon skill. So even when it's... like, I've seen one where it was like 170 TP I spent for that, and it was, it was gonna do like 350 or something with a bite, but it still had only like 60% damage because the unit had a really high uh, weapon skill. So bear in mind it can still be parried, it can still be avoided, uh, even with higher accuracy. But uh, I don't feel like the accuracy scales super highly. But it is an amazing move. Uh, liftoff lasts two turns, as it should. Uh, that's basically the uh, dragon gets to fly now move. Uh, added beckon, a special skill that does the amount of damage equal to any target that the target currently suffers. Uh, also added recall, a special skill that skill that uh, stills a single undead. It was a bit abusable as a spell, as necromancers aren't very sturdy. This and beckon are mostly meant to give them options against enemies that break into the back line. So yeah, uh, very useful for keeping them going. Uh, actually, I <laughs> gotta say, I really love how necromancers have changed. It's like they're they're so much more of a unique unit now. It's beautiful. 
Alright, Conviction is back to charging MP every time it hits, however the amount is a percentage of the user's own pool instead of equal to hit. It will usually be lower. Uh, Princess equipped as a mage with items that raise max MP will obviously recover more. So this basically meant that previously if you ranked up Conviction it was pretty much a full heal on MP. And uh, now instead of that it'll just give a percentage, so quite a bit more useful and a bit more predictable. Uh, Acid Breath and Hydra Press now always inflict Breach. Uh, Crystal Pumpkin and Requiem always exercise. Okay, I was really wondering about Crystal Pumpkin, but yeah, that was a... Uh, basically, it's a thing like if you kill the thing with the Crystal Pumpkin, that gets exercised. For some reason, it didn't always work before. Not sure what that's about. Uh, Tainted Kiss always uh, inflict Poison and Venom. Stun still has a chance to work. Uh, Silent Song TB, or TP uh, cost reduced to 20. Instead of inflicting Silence, it will remove all MP that uh, the targets have and deal an equal uh, amount of HP damage. This obviously is useful against casters, but can still do solid damage cheaply against classes that don't cast spells very often, like Knights. And yeah, this, um, uh, this is another really good one to give uh, Angel Knights a bit more utility. Um, Poignant Melody does the same, but to TP, making it potentially both debilitating and devastating. TP slash RP cost was increased to 40-20, so yeah. Angel Knights are actually threatening now. Uh, instead of removing Zombified Condition, Celestial Song removes HP by TP spent and clears all status effects. Good. I want to say that all... F I want to say there was something similar to that in KOL. Uh, one of my biggest things when going into the remake was a bunch of confusion over what the Angel Knight's abilities were now because everything was entirely different. Alright, so finishing moves... Uh, Jad has, uh, has less range, but can be targeted anywhere and can't hit self anymore. I don't remember whose ability that is. I, I want to say that's one of the kill moves. Um, Annihilate has more range, does dark damage and inflicts curse. Uh, Obliterate has more range. Liquidate has more range and resets TP. Devastate does lightning damage in a larger area. Uh, now here's the big one. Level 6 finishers for projectile weapons inflict no status effects anymore, but have different advantages. Heaven to Hell does full damage at a greatly extended range, and Flagrante re renamed to Starfall. It does light damage in an area with uh, moderate penalty and lowered range. So basically, archers are no longer your endgame long-range charm unit anymore, <laughs> is what that says. Uh, Sidewinder uh, got renamed to Blunderbuss. It does lightning damage at point-blank range, but scales damage with TP. So again, makes your, uh, your gun units way stronger now. And I actually want to show off a couple of those real quick. All right, let's take these notes off. Oh, whoops, why is Steam trying to launch? Oh, wait, Steam, we don't need you right now. Yeah, Canopus was basically, like, spamming Inflagrante was kind of his role here. Uh, also, you may notice that these guys might be missing a few bits and pieces here and there. It's fine, this is just a test save. Don't worry about it, it's all good. So, what do we have here? Finishing moves. Yeah, Starfall right here. So, air damage in an area. Very useful. And, you know what, let's... Not what I meant to do. Let's go over here. Alright, so I had Vice set up as a gun unit. Actually, I think we're going to have Yunin representing the gun units. Now we're going to have Canopus going in here with his whole thing. Uh, by the way, ignore that uh, the MP is flashing. Again, this is just a test save. <laughs> it does weird stuff. Uh, let's see, Nightmare, renamed to Quill Rain. Uh, which one was Nightmare? You know what, let me take a quick peek at that. Alright, Quill Rain, Quill Rain, where are you? Now, the, the idea behind the change here just seems to be to get rid of some of the moves that were kind of the, you know, the one that you absolutely have to use. Oh, interesting. Okay, so th by the way, Armin here, uh, no longer a, um, a use ability. It looks like it's a kill move now, uh, but a very low-cost one. Alright, Blunderbuss, where is this one? It's gonna wind up being um, a throne you know, or, or a throne weapon one, isn't it? Yeah, unfortunately I can't show that one then, because this is the save that doesn't have those. Well, Conveniently, then I can just load up that save now, can't I? Yeah, there might have been a lot of saves. Okay. Yeah, I've got my throne unit guy here. 
Actually, I believe I have denim as a gunner, yeah, so. Fine. Let's see if that's correct. Is that correct? Are you the one that has quill rain? Nope, I'm thinking of a completely different one. Okay. Well, I'm not sure what quill rain is on then. But, uh, whatever, we can take a look at the other ones. You guys can just go ahead and uh, shank to moves here. Get your TPs up. Yeah, ignore the uh, constant skill ups here. Again, that's just part of this whole test save here. Alright, uh, Dragon Scale, down to that. Why don't you move up here? For Shocker, madam. Give me more points. You go over here and just shoot this rando here. Alright. In the next round, we should be able to test these out. Let's see what this one looks like. We got... What is it? Starfall. An airy move here. Nice. Okay, so... Basically just got a friggin' meteor dropping from orbit. Fantastic. Actually, no, you know what? That's the, the frickin' Rambo uh, grenade bow move. That's what that is. Alright. In retrospect, you know what I probably should have done? This is the buggy save. I apologize. This is the buggy save. Definitely the buggy save. Well, yeah. <laughs> like I said, I kinda bugged it out just, just a little bit. Show that move off then. Couple gunners in here. Or let's just go back to Farampa. Yeah, so if you're wondering what the hell that was all about, uh, basically, like I said, this uh, this is what happens when you put way too many cheat codes onto um, onto an emulator. And for some reason, one of those cheat codes overwrote the effects for... What's it? Uh, basically completely overwrote the effect for uh, certain axes doing a downward chop. <laughs> I don't know why, but it basically was a soft lock there. Again, that's not um, it's not a mod thing. That is a I broke the thing and you shouldn't do that kind of thing. Alright. Okay. He got vaporized, don't worry about it. Uh, if you use a cursed weapon to kill something, um, if the first hit kills, it just basically vaporizes them. It's kind of hilarious. That actually applies to anything that does a uh, double uh, double hit of any variety. But it's just especially funny with cursed weapons. So they're going to do their thing. Now let's see how much damage this does. That Sidewinder. Oh, right. This is why you don't load in your saves. Okay, that's why we're gonna restart the simulation. If you, if anyone's ever wondering why exactly it is that you load up, um, load up a hard save instead of using a save state, that is why. Now I think I should have fixed it. Yep, blunderbuss. Holy crap! Okay. <laughs> cool. Okay. So, I'm going to go ahead and retreat then. So yeah, really, 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 really strong there. Now let's get this back up. This is yes, retreat. Now then. Uh, okay, special finishers that the Dark Knights use are actually better than the normal ones. These ones I'll be showing off in the IM run uh, as soon as I get back to it tomorrow. But yeah. Fiery Death, renamed to Witch Hunt, does uh, damage in area and inflicts Shackle. Uh, Angel of Death does damage in area and inflicts Fear. Uh, Venomous Strike, changed to Creeping Doom, uh, does damage in area and inflicts Slow and Poison. Uh, Crushing Blow, got renamed to Riot Buster, does damage in area and does Sleep. Uh, Tempest Blade, got renamed to Fatal Fury, uh, does damage in area and resets RT. Um, Dark Prison, does damage in area and inflicts Stop. Uh, Armageddon, renamed to Atropos. Does damage in area and inflicts an, an extended duration petrify, so 
Got references to all kinds of stuff from uh, uh, Fatal Fury as in the series, Atropos from uh, KOL, and I believe from the original um, uh, Lucked as well. Uh, these other ones, I know I've heard them before, but I don't know. Anyhow, uh, lastly, racial templates. Uh, enemy leader Garion in the Act 1 battle looks just like a Terra Knight now. Uh, he will become one at a later date. So he found a way to change their appearance, uh, but he hasn't quite gotten there for changing the full class yet. But it's a start. We're getting into the point of um, the party's actually getting customized now, so that's going to be friggin' awesome once that happens. Uh, more leader stats were further adjusted, especially recruitable characters that appear as enemies like Vice or Zapan. And by the way, he was actually mentioning that uh, in the future, uh, he's working on giving player control to uh, certain units that view you as friends like for example when you're rescuing Zapan I believe was one of them or um uh, what's it like when when uh, Kashua and Bayan and stuff come in not Kashua uh, what's her face uh, Sestina and stuff come in later but they actually view you as a friend so like the first fight she doesn't know who you are so you wouldn't be able to give her orders but later on you know when you're rescuing Bayan or something like that that way he won't immediately run into the other guys like oh yeah check it out you know, hold, <laughs> check out my old man abs, and then just get shot 50 times. So, no more, you know, Robocop opening for Bayon, hopefully. Uh, okay, lastly, Grimoire Reparation is available in POTD Shop. I believe that's one for that Necromancer ability. And then lastly, once again, renamed Weaken, Weaken to Rupture. It should be more obvious that it reduces magic resistance now. Oil Spell uh, changed to Feeble Mind. It should be different from Spell Slip now. There's a few little changes there. But yeah, as per usual, very, uh, very interesting set of new changes. So we'll see how all this goes, and, uh, yeah. Um, I guess the next thing here will either be the I Am run with, um, with showing off some of those Dark Knight things, or, uh, have a few teams already in place for the, uh, AI arena. Uh, that will be... That'll be coming out as it comes out. I meant to do it uh, last week, but this uh, little soft lock bug with the axes, yeah, that was a, that was the weird bug that actually stopped it from happening because I ran into that a couple times, and then I found out that I broke it because I used codes that I shouldn't have used. But okay, you know, there's a lot of them, and I don't understand most of them, and I'm basically trying to build a rocket ship out of space oil. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, point being, that's all coming soon. You know, enjoy the new update, and uh, see you whenever that next seeing you happens, I guess. Bye.